Hey guys, welcome back to another video. We're going to be doing passage three in the CP section for the AMC sample test. Let's go. So this passage looks pretty short and um, you know, pretty good, pretty easy. Let's let's get into it. It says um, hydrated oxides of carbon and phosphorus are major components of blood serum and serve as buffering agents to this aqueous medium. Okay, you know, a desperate grasp at trying to make this related to physiology. Um, thank you. I really feel like I'm studying something that matters here. Uh, molecules with the general formula AO sub M OH sub N, where A is the central atom, M is either zero or a positive integer, and N is a positive integer, integer are either oxy acids or bases. Okay. For example, the formula for sulfuric acid can be written as SO2OH2, where A is S, M is 2, and N is 2, while the formula for calcium hydroxide is CaOH2. A is calcium, M is zero, N is two. Okay, so I kind of understand what it was saying now. So they gave us this uh, really like weird sentence where it was talking about that the general formula of some molecules um, and, and, you know, a central atom and these integers, and it can either be an acid or a base. Um, I was like all over the place at first, but um, then they gave me some good examples of, you know, um, sulfuric acid and, and calcium hydroxide. So you should come in knowing, obviously, sulfuric acid is an acid, and then that calcium hydroxide is a, a base. Um, and they gave me kind of what they were talking about here. So I'm not completely internalizing that, um, but I do know that I could probably pick that out. Um, if they gave me, you know, something with this formula, I could probably say, okay, I know what A is, you know, an M and N and stuff like that. So far, I haven't written anything in my flow chart. Um, I haven't come across anything that I feel is too confusing or that needs to be put in like a relationship kind of term. Um, I do notice some basic sciences here, my oxy acids and bases, um, you know, buffering agents, that would be um, a basic science. So let's just keep going. So it can be theorized that if the central atom A is an alkali or alkaline earth metal, the compound is basic, but if A is a non-metal, the compound is acidic. Okay, even though that's pretty simply laid out there, I'm going to make a little note of my flow chart. Um, so alkali or alkali earth equals, um, you know, base. And then non-metal, it's acidic. Because of the relationship between the central atom and the acid-base properties of AOMOHN compounds, the electronegativity of A can be used to predict which chemical bonds in these compounds will break. Right. When the electronegativity of A is relatively small, so that the electronegativity difference between A and O atoms is relatively large, the AO bond breaks and the OH- ion is released. Okay, so that's basically saying the same stuff as the previous um, little, like this part was, right? Because where are the low electronegativity um, atoms or elements on the periodic table? They're, you know, on the left side um, where the alkali and the alkaline earth metals are. So that's just saying that it's going to release an OH minus ion and, and therefore be considered a base. I can uh, kind of foreshadow a question here asking about, um, you know, what definition of acid-base chemistry that kind of goes with. And that would be probably like an Arrhenius um, definition of bases. But, you know, again, just keeping that in my mind. It says, however, when the electronegativity of A is relatively large, the OH bond becomes polarized and breaks, releasing the H plus ion. So um, that would be probably more of like a Bronsted-Lowry definition, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically saying the same thing, like electronegativity would be large on your non-metal side, and therefore it would be, um, you know, an acid because it's releasing a hydrogen ion. Okay. Um, the, a researcher attempted to identify an unknown 
this kind of compound. The compound completely dissolved in water, weakly conducted electricity, and the hydrogen ion concentration of the unknown aqueous solution was 1 times 10 to the negative 5 molar. All right. That would be foreshadowing. If you've seen our foreshadowing video, it, that would be like an interruption to me. Like that's kind of out of nowhere. It's clear that they're going to ask a question on that later. So you can see my flow chart here is, is kind of lacking. Um, I really didn't write much at all, but there was just not many like words in this passage and there's not that much that's really confusing. And, you know, I foreshadowed a little bit, but I don't really... I mean, I, I can kind of predict what kind of questions they're going to ask because they, they put like this last little bit in here about this. Um, they're trying to find the identity of this unknown thing and they give us some parameters. I imagine they're going to make us identify uh, the compound, but we'll see. The first question, which is number 10 in the sample test, is what was the pH of the unknown aqueous solution? All right, so... This is pretty straightforward. Like, what are some ways that we can come up with the pH? Um, we're given the hydrogen ion concentration. And so, you know, the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration is going to be equal to the pH. If you're not familiar with logarithms, I would definitely get a little bit familiar with log base 10 at least, um, just for these type questions. And so, the negative log of uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 5 is going to be 5. So a little trick, you know, you can just kind of take this number up here, like the scientific notation number, the exponent, and um, take the negative version of it. So taking the negative of a negative is the positive. So the answer here is going to be B. Okay, the second question the unknown compound was probably A, glancing at the answer choices, we see it's going to make us pick between acid and base and also between strong and weak. So um, what, are my, what are my clues that are going to tell me, like, what this is? Well, first off, we just came up with a huge one, which was the pH of the unknown um, aqueous solution. So just based off that, a pH of 5, that's going to be kind of on the acidic end, but not that far on the acidic end. And so I'm going to go out on a limb here and say it's a weak acid. I can see, um, you know, students getting confused with this part in the passage right here where it says the compound completely dissolved in water and think that that means that the acid completely dissociated in water. I understand. I think that that language by the AAMC is a little bit sus, and I don't think that that's the way that they should have said it. Um, but just because a compound completely dissolves in water does not mean that its acidic bonds completely dissociated in water. Um, something completely dissociating in water would be obviously a sign that it's a weak, I mean, sorry, a strong acid. Um, but something completely dissolving in water, like sugar completely dissolves in water. Um, that doesn't mean that it's a strong acid. So in this case, we have a better um, indicator, which would be that it has a pH of 5 and also that it only weakly conduct conducted electricity. The next question, number uh, 12, says two additional compounds were studied, NO2OH dissolved in water and produced an acidic solution, and NIOH2 dissolved only in an acidic solution. What type of compounds were these? There's several ways to figure this question out. First off, if you notice this NO2OH is just a different way to write HNO3, which is nitric acid, then you already know that that one is an acid. And so, I mean, whether it's an oxy acid or not, it doesn't really matter. It, it's not a base, right? So it's an acid. Um, meanwhile, you could also uh, look at the central atom because we're told if it's an, a non-metal, which it is in this one, that the compound is an oxy acid. And if it's a metal, then it's probably a base. Um, so that's another way to figure that out, even though y'all are going to say nickel's not a uh, alkali or an alkali earth metal. It's a transition metal. That's true, but it's still a metal. Um, that's just one way to figure it out. You could also say that 
something that dissolves in water and produces an acidic solution is going to have to be an acid. You can't dissolve a base and get an acidic solution. So um, that's another way to say that that's an acid. Um, and that this one, the fact that it only dissolved in an acidic solution means that it's a base. You know, um, here, like dissolves like. But that's for, that's not for acid-base chemistry. That's like for hydrophobic versus hydrophilic type stuff. Um, in acid-base chemistry, you're going to want like the opposite thing to dissolve it. So there's, there's just several ways to figure this out. Um, but no matter which way you go about it, D is the right answer. The next question and the last question of this passage is the central atom A of the unknown compound was most likely... So this is kind of working forwards and backwards. We have to think about, is the unknown compound um, an oxyacid or is it a base? We've already kind of, in the first two questions, pinned down that it's, you know, an acid. Um, and therefore, it's, it's just a matter of realizing that an acid in this passage is theorized to have a central atom that's a nonmetal. Um, so therefore, the central atom of the unknown compound was probably a nonmetal. So that's the end of that passage. It was pretty um, short and straightforward for the most part, but if you got one little thing wrong, then you would get like all of those questions wrong. You know, if you thought that the unknown compound was like a base or something, then you would have probably gotten all of those wrong. So um, make sure to not um, get that part wrong, I guess. But anyway, um, as always, let us know what you want to see in our next video um, down in the comments. Hit like and subscribe, and we'll continue doing these breakdowns. See you next time.